Um, of course, today uh, I'm, we're going to do it slightly different. Um, I'm here with our Vice Chancellor, Professor um, uh, Kenneth Matengu, who is going to welcome us uh, on, on, on for the 2021 academic year. Um, of course, we're keeping our social distancing. We've, we've had our mask before. We have to take our mask off so that we are able to communicate with you clearly. So, ladies and gentlemen, may I welcome you, our Vice Chancellor, Professor uh, Kenneth Matengu. Good morning, Professor. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nampala, for, for the opportunity. Good morning, uh, staff and students and all the UNAM family. It really g gives me a great pleasure uh, this morning to be able to speak to you in this manner. It would have been uh, my desire to do so face to face, uh, as we had done it before, but uh, under the circumstances that she has already explained, we are uh, adapting to, to to new circumstances and conditions. And this is what the human nature is about. That's what mm -hmm. has made the human being survive all the species, the ability to adapt as things change. Mm -hmm. So this morning, I would like to say the following uh, as I welcome you. First of all, to the first years, I would like to say welcome to the University of Namibia. Uh, it's an institution uh, of your choice, Namibia's premier higher education institution. Welcome to the University of Namibia. Mm -hmm. You are joining a family that is uh, great, a family that is committed, uh, a family that doesn't want to just uh, do things for its own sake, but driven by a purpose and a vision. Mm -hmm. um, VC, um, I think it's good. Let's first start with our our new, our first years, the, or the newcomers at, at UNAM, and even those in general who don't really know what uh, your work evolved as the vice chancellor. I mean, we talk about vice chancellor of the University of Namibia, vice chancellor, VC, this, VC, that. But what exactly do you do as a vice chancellor? Just to enlighten, especially our first years. What is your role as a vice chancellor? Thank you. The the vice chancellor position in the university is prescribed in the University Act of uh, 1992, uh, Act number 18, uh, where it is clearly stipulated that the vice chancellor is the chief academic and administrative staff uh, uh, of the university. What does that mean? It means the, the vice chancellor has to ensure that all academic programs that are offered in the institution are of quality. Uh, they are accredited uh, and that those programs that are being uh, delivered, whether they are for proficiency reasons or for professional uh, levels, that they are uh, subscribing to international norms either by UNESCO or any other body. Secondly, uh, the Vice Chancellor also operates as the Chief Executive Officer, meaning is accountable and responsible for the decisions that are made. Mm. Now, how is this done? We have a structure mm. through which the university operates. We have two uh, uh, high decision-making bodies. On academic affairs, we have Senate, which has its own subcommittees. And on administrative and governance side, we have Council, which is responsible for policies. SVC, every day, <laughs> what I do is to steer these two arms and ensure that they are at all the times uh, adhering to what is expected in an international institution like ours. So it's a job where you are everything to everyone all the time. <laughs> Does that also mean that you sort of like try to tell uh, people that don't know much about UNAM that it's a great place to learn or best choice that they can make? Yes, I do that <laughs> uh, in various forms. <laughs> we, <coughs> we engage mm -hmm. our stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, and it's my job as the VC to ensure that our stakeholders are properly informed. Mm -hmm. Uh, about where the university is going, where the challenges it's facing, the opportunities we see, mm. uh, the competencies we have, we have that would respond to the challenges that society may face, mm. uh, but also to to steer the different um, initiatives and projects that the institution. But what 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 makes UNAM the great choice of learning? I mean, what is the advantage? Many. <laughs> Many, one of which is... Give me a few. Uh, okay, I'll give you a few. One is that uh, the University of Namibia is uh, located in a country that is politically stable, that mm. has a respect for the rule of law. Mm. 
Uh, so many students who come here would know that they are coming to an institution that is stable. Mm -hmm. But if you have a four-year degree a program and you are committed to achieving it, you will achieve it within and graduate within the four-year mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. Secondly, all our, most of our programs have gone through the, the National Qualification Framework, uh, which means that when you graduate here, your, your certificate would be able to be... Uh, uh, Reco assist, recognized an, anywhere, anywhere else yeah, in, yeah, in the world, yeah, yes. yeah. Um, and also, I think, um, and meaning that even as a university student, you need to learn how to manage time. You need to learn, you know. Um, of course, you've got four years. You are doing an undergrad, but also for you as VC, how do you manage your time? I mean, you you mentioned your role. It looks like you have a lot of things to do. So, how do you manage your time? Let me start by saying, coming to the university is a very good decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as you come here, you must be aware that nobody is going to tell you how to manage your time. Yeah. As a student... <laughs> that, many of us, we struggle here to, uh, <laughs> to manage our time, so maybe you can give us some tips. Uh, and that, that may be a very difficult thing if you are, say, it's the first time you are coming from your parents' home mm. or from a hostel. Yeah, yeah. And you come here, nobody is going to say, wake up, go to class. <laughs> yeah. Nobody is going to say you didn't do your assignment. So you have to be very conscious of the fact that you are an adult now. Mm. You mm -hmm. have to be responsible and account for your time. Mm. So how do I do that? Uh, or maybe before I say how I do it, <laughs> I also take time out as VC mm. to walk around and visit staff in their offices. Like surprise uh, visit, like to see if we are doing our work or what? Uh, no, visit. it's not inspection. <laughs> it's just to have a chat. Mm. Uh, yeah. And sometimes people surprise me. Uh, <laughs> they they tell me uh, uh, you didn't make an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> they are telling you VC you didn't uh, make an appointment. And it's okay. Uh, and we have a discussion around it <laughs> mm. uh, because I also respect their time. Yeah, of course. Uh, but I I also want to know what they are busy with. So if yeah. they didn't know me, they would normally tell me you didn't make an appointment. But once yeah. they know who I am, uh. then I ask about their work and so on. Mm. But the point I want to say is. We are an administration that is uh, accountable, that, uh, that uh, respects the, our core values. Yeah. And within that, this is where I want to say, how do we manage our time? Yeah. It's very important that when you come here, you clear your purpose. Why are you here? Mm. You are not here for your parents uh, to, to give them a certificate. It's for you. Mm. You have to remember that you are here to contribute to the, to the development of this country and globally. Mm. So management of your time is important. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you have eight hours of sleep. <laughs> You'll be eight committed hours. to eight as hours a student, of work. This is a student to have eight hours of sleep. Why not? <laughs> student you, life. <laughs> this is, you, you are at your best. In terms of uh, science, between 17 and 28 years, this is your most creative time of, of, of your yeah. for innovative. So maximize it by using your time better. Yeah. But yeah. important, sleep enough, be committed to the eight hours of studies that you have, mm. be active in sports, read, have time for friends. All this, if you calculate your time better, you will find if you spread it, mm. it will give you 24 hours. <laughs> but and you need to use it effectively. <laughs> but juggling time, busy. But n n nonetheless, um, speaking of students, um, um, what can students look forward to uh, uh, during 2021? Um, let's, let's quickly talk to our students directly. Yes, so what has happened? Mm. When we took office, uh, we agreed that uh, the universe needs to relook at how it operates, how its curriculums speak to the vision and global competitive, uh, competitiveness needs. Mm. So w as Senate, we took a decision that we are going to transform the curriculum, not renew or revise, but transform. Mm. The whole of last year, we worked on a curriculum transformation. Obviously, before, just to cut you, when yeah. you say uh, transform, can you maybe elaborate a little bit on that? What does it mean for, I mean, some of our students may not understand what you mean by transform. Okay, mm. transformation means uh, overhaul, or if I could put it biblically. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says you renew their, your heart and mm -hmm. transform your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we mean is that we are, the, our attitude towards learning, yeah. the, what's the purpose of why we are studying, whatever we are studying, yeah. is different. It is not going to be towards finding a job only mm, mm. it's towards entrepreneurship creative uh, creativeness problem solving 
being engaged, mm. having to bother yourselves with local and international problems, not waiting just to be a complainant. Yeah. So this curriculum is transforming our minds to think differently about mm. what education is, yeah. what it means to us, yeah. why we study, and how we can use it to help the okay. people out there. Yeah, so that, anyway, so we were talking about so, curriculum transformation. Yeah, yeah, so this curriculum framework, this transformation mm. framework mm. has 40 competencies that we want our learners to come, our graduates to come out. Once they graduate, mm. they must have those competencies. Yeah. And this means the curriculum is going to be flexible. We will require less theory and a lot more uh, scientific engagement and mm. practicals. Yeah, critical so, thinking. Yeah, critical also, thinking, yeah. engagement with the uh, stakeholders, spending more time in the sector where you are studying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and really ensuring that uh, we we are giving the opportunity for learners to learn. Yeah. This means, just in, uh, in final on this from my side, yeah. it means we have two initiatives here. Yeah. One, students must expect that we have launched this uh, Chancellor's Innovation Fund. Mm. That is an opportunity for them mm. to be creative, to demonstrate their creativity and their attention to the challenges that the society and industry may face. Mm. Secondly, with the support from the Bank of Namibia and NAMFISA, mm. we have launched a work readiness program mm. uh, through which students must go through to be ready for the world of work. Um, maybe you can just elaborate a bit on the Chancellor's Fund, um, just yes. to, yeah, for, for, the, for those that are listening. Wh what does that entail? Okay, so the Chancellor's Innovation Fund mm -hmm. uh, is a, a vehicle mm -hmm. we will be using to put out a call out there for our researchers, our students who have a, a, a business idea. So they have to be UNAM students? They have to be UNAM for now. They have to be UNAM students. Or researchers. Or researchers. Mm -hmm. uh, and they pitch that idea. Oh. That idea is then evaluated by external business people. Who are chosen by? Who would be, uh, there's a criteria. Okay. Would be chosen mm. uh, by the, uh, the Office of the Provost Chancellor for Research, Innovation and Development. Okay. But they are out external people. Mm. Mm. They use a criteria to evaluate whether this business pitch is feasible and viable. Mm. Does it have a market? Mm. Uh, how innovative is it? How disruptive is it? Mm. Uh, mm. Can it create business? Once they have checked that criteria and, and a, a select group is successful, mm. they would be allowed to do detailed proposals. Mm. Those detailed proposals would then be the basis on which they are funded. Mm. They are incubated between 9 to 18 months Okay. Uh, within this space. Mm. Uh, the money they are given to, 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 to ensure this idea uh, succeeds mm. is not that we will take them to court if they don't <laughs> succeed. We know from innovation mm. that... There are Things can fail that sometimes, fail. yeah. And it's a yeah. lesson. The important yeah. thing is to learn from yeah. that. But how do you hold them accountable then if that's if you can't take them to there's court to ensure that they don't... There's a process to it. Oh, okay, there's a process to it. And if we yeah. see halfway that you are not committed, yeah, then you we ask you to go to the gate. <laughs> okay. And, and this work readiness that you spoke about, I think just for our... We, have a, we have a department for cooperative education, or what others uh, say, work integrated learning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that the idea is that at least uh, 15 to 20 percent of our students, especially third and fourth year, yeah. must be placed somewhere before they, they uh, graduate. Mm. Uh, and the, the intention with that is that they must spend time when they go to wherever they may be placed, whether it's in a mine or in a hospital or, or in a business entity. Mm. They, they have to commit to certain learning outcomes mm. and we would inform where the host that by the time this student ends mm. these are the learning outcomes we expect them to achieve yeah so yeah. gone are the days when they are sent to somewhere mm. and they are relegated to making coffees and making copies of them mm. those are not related so uh, okay. to learning so we mm. want them to really take serious attention yeah, to yeah, coaching to that they yeah. get come out with the skill yeah. So the overall expectation idea is that we are preparing our students for the world of work, yeah, for yeah, the future, for the not future. for now. Yeah, I mean, I mean w the yeah. world of work is changing anyway, so yes, we, yes. We, we have to be prepared as a university Absolutely. Uh, in that case, yeah. yeah. Um, VC, uh, speaking of students, um, I think most of us, even speaking from our own experience, we miss the classrooms. <laughs> when do you think we, uh, we can come back to our main campuses, I mean, to our campuses, or, 
you know, just face to face. When, yeah. when, when can the students really be expected to come back? I mean, the schools, the, I mean, the primary schools, the schools are already there. Mm. And those are the kids that are even difficult to manage. Mm. The university, we are supposed to be like the bigger people. I mean, you see. <laughs> <laughs> It's my sincere heart <laughs> that students would be back on campuses and we would work. Mm -hmm. But it is out of the responsibility mm -hmm. of ensuring that if we were to do that, we have to do it in a, in a fashion that doesn't expose anybody yeah. to safety and health risks. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as a university, I mean, you're a teacher, I don't know how, <laughs> you're a lecturer, I don't know how many uh, students your class average would be. Um, I think but this year I had about 200, uh, um, 100 and something second years. You see, that, that's the challenge. <laughs> In yeah. primary or secondary schools, the classes, if it's really big, could be 35, 40. Yeah, it's true. But in a university, we have classes that are 100, 100 yeah, 500, 500 class. 800. Yeah. Uh, so we have, we have to adhere to the protocols. Now, mm. I am aware of the, the changes in the uh, regulations as announced yesterday, yeah. which are now, now allows 100. Mm. So where the, the, the safety and health protocols, in conjunction with the relevant authorities, mm. we will discuss this and see how, what can we do, where it is possible. Yeah. Yeah. We certainly yeah. desire that students yeah. be back. Or maybe even consider sort of like a some hybrid, blending, some something blending, some blending blended of yeah. way of doing things. I, I can't promise, but yeah. we will certainly <laughs> discuss it. We, yeah. The primary thing is we have to make sure that uh, mm. nobody is exposed to yeah. safety and health I mean, the risks. safety and health obviously yeah. is it's a priority. Yes. So uh, everything has to be yeah. within the safety yeah. protocols yes. of, of, of our students exactly. and everybody but else. But the large numbers, yeah. I think, are the, the challenge here. Yeah, but, but for small numbers, so those that have that want to do seminar styles, maybe. Yeah. Once we have those, those discussions, then yeah. we will have a criteria mm. that says if the class is like this, then this is mm. how you will do it. If yeah. it's like this, this is how you do yeah. it. Yeah. But obviously, a, a lot of things for now we have to do the online um, learning, prof. And sh and you know there has been a lot of challenges, <laughs> and I can even tell you from my own experiences, <laughs> you know. But before, I l but let me first ask. Um, let's quickly talk about the digital. Uh, divide or the digital illiteracy that we have in this country. Um, prof, uh, especially for our first year students, you know, you know that we have those that have never even seen a computer or they've never touched a mouse. And, but now they have to do this virtual learning. What kind of support is there that UNAM is providing to our students for them to navigate this, this, some of these challenges? Yeah. Uh, I will answer it this way. <laughs> 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 Education is a shared responsibility yeah. between the government, the students, the university, the funders, mm -hmm. whether they are parents or entities. Now, in that context, we must also remember that we are a developmental state. Yeah. In other words, <laughs> as a country... <laughs> we are in still in the process of putting relevant infrastructures everywhere. Mm. Now, if you look at the the data, you, you will say that penetrations of uh, telephone networks mm. is maybe 95 or, or more during the country. But then, if you mm. uh, if you assess mm. it, mm -hmm. what type of network? Yeah. Then and the quality. Two, it's 2G, mm. 3G. Yeah. But for the purposes of what goes on in the university you will need 4G or 5G, 5G yeah. even better. Yeah. So the issue of digital divide is real, it's there. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what have you done as a university? Mm -hmm. We have uh, engaged uh, our partners, uh, Telecom and MTC, uh, where students are given dongles to be, access, to be able to uh, uh, access uh, the, uh, the online learning platforms. Mm. Uh, but we know that uh, even 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 if such is there, there are those who don't know those, the literacy. There are those the who, literacy. Who, who need computer literacy. Exactly. Yeah. There are those who may have these devices, but they are in a geographical area yeah. where the network is maybe a 2G, <laughs> which would be running and running and downloading, yeah. and they get yeah. frustrated and they leave. Mm. And it comes back to my point of education is a shared responsibility. Mm. If I'm that kind of student, and what do I, what do, I do? Mm. Maybe I have an, an uncle in a nearby town. Maybe I go there to access the network for two, three days. It's a sacrifice. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's a sacrifice. So I can download these things, I come back and then I listen to them like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the, the, the whole issue of the digital divide is a big issue globally. Mm. It's part of the, the SDGs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and we have to address by sharing this responsibility yeah. all but, of us yeah but also maybe the university cannot put towers yeah no i think yeah i think of course the university cannot put towers but maybe w w uh, the university can think of other means sort of like maybe some kind of i don't know um you know especially for the for the first years like for to use some of the systems that are put in place like we've got these learning platforms like Moodle and others but now the f a first year who hasn't yet uh, being exposed to this, to mm. how to use Moodle, for, for instance, yeah. or, a, or any other uh, uh, system that are put in place. So how do we help, how do we support these kind of students? Because the lectures have started and the oh. students need to start. Our wonderful, <laughs> our wonderful colleagues in Cordell mm. have put an exciting video uh, that stipulates the protocols of what do you need to do yeah. to use the online platforms. Yeah. So I think just contact those offices yeah. and then they will run through this uh, short video that tells you what to do to register, to access, model, to upload, to download and so on. So mm. that is there. But yeah. again, mm -hmm. uh, how useful is that if a person doesn't have the laptop or yeah. doesn't have a smartphone? A smartphone? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And those are the reasons why last year we decided to bring back 6,000 students yeah. for face to face. Yeah. Because it kind despite of all cuts. the efforts that didn't succeed. And so we still, we still yeah. pay attention. Yeah. And I must use this opportunity to appeal to the industry to donate laptops mm. and computers, yeah, computers to our students who really need. Yeah. If you are using your laptop once a week or yeah. once a month and you don't or you don't really need it, talk yeah. to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, speaking of this, also surely the university has some kind um, of uh, key priorities. Mm. Uh, may maybe you could also uh, we could also maybe discuss that. What are some of the key priorities for the university management this year? What can staff expect? What can we expect? We the staff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> what can staff expect? Uh -huh. We have a strategic plan mm. that is anchored on four thematic areas. Mm. Uh, and I don't need to, to repeat them here, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I encourage everyone uh, to read them. It's also on our website. We expect that the budgets of the budget of the university and of the various faculties and departments will be anchored on those four yeah. uh, uh, thematic areas of focus, which mm. has specific objectives. We expect that we really focus our activities on those. Mm -hmm. That's one. Uh, number two mm. is that, uh, as we all know, we have restructured. Mm. So from 1st June, mm. we will have four faculties. Mm. And that's uh, what, what uh, just for, yeah? Okay. Uh, <laughs> what are they? Faculty of Agriculture, uh -huh. Engineering and Natural Sciences. That's one faculty? That's one faculty. Uh -huh. Uh, the faculty of uh, uh, education, education and human sciences. Yeah, that's one faculty. That's a, maybe I should step back and say the first one mm -hmm. is a major of the faculty of agriculture, mm. a major of engineering, and a major of the faculty of science. So yeah. those three, yeah, they become one faculty. Become one. Yeah. Why? Because we are creating strength and resilience and more competency to be able to speak to processes and products that we expect. Yeah. The, the agriculture people need engineers yeah. to come up with these products, but science is important in that. Yeah. Uh, and so they need to work so uh, as a team. So the synergies and the synchronization there is important. Mm. Uh, faculty of, of education, education and, and human sciences, yeah. that's mm. a major of education, mm. and the faculty of humanities and <laughs> Two big faculties. Mm -hmm. Very big faculties. <laughs> they are going to be merged, and we are confident that the work that they will do mm -hmm. Uh, will be so impactful. Okay. Human development mm. is dependent on mm. the thinking, the philosophies. Yeah. But how we teach in education is not always that it is benefiting in the right manner from philosophy, from sociology. From so mm. we want we want to ensure that research is continuously feeding these disciplines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the third and fourth. The third faculty is a faculty of. Uh, 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 economic uh, mm. uh, is a major of uh, economic and management sciences and the faculty of law. Mm. And so that's the that's faculty of uh, uh, management, commerce and governance. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, so that yeah, but the, and, this is all and these schools. Mm. Then the last one is the Faculty of Health and mm. uh, Veterinary Medicine. Yeah, which which is which the is major a major of, of a Faculty of uh, Health mm. and the School of Veterinary Medicine. Mm. And again, there we are speaking about one health. Yeah, where uh, we take into account when our students are being taught, they are not just taught about human diseases, but they need to learn also that there are diseases that comes from animals that human mm. beings get. Yeah, uh, yeah. and th and the way to uh, to treat that uh, to to approach is is to ensure that uh, uh, the yeah. relevant competencies are yeah. exposed to those people. Function. Yeah, uh, uh, Prof, you, you mentioned the restructuring. Maybe you can just talk a little bit about the restructuring without going into details. I think we'll talk about that some other time. But just a little bit on, because you mentioned that the four faculties that we ha that are to have are part of the restructuring process. Maybe just a little bit on that. Yeah, well, mm. with that is we have an implementation restructuring committee which has been having meetings with the faculties, with uh, departments, with the relevant individuals. Mm. It means a redeployment, amalgamation of some centers, mm. uh, uh, and uh, creation of new structures. But also as part of this process is a skills audit. We have already done uh, three units mm -hmm. uh, where we have done skills and competency audits. Yeah. The idea of that, uh, I know people can be afraid. <laughs> the, actually, the, these people are actually afraid the, of the, losing their jobs the during this process. That, Maybe you can just like... <laughs> the idea of that is to be helpful to all of us. Yeah. If I have a certain competency and skill in the job, but I'm placed somewhere else where I can't use, use these so skills, skills yeah. we want to make sure that people are placed where they can fully utilize the, the skills, skills they yeah, have. Yeah. So, yeah. so this fear of people like, you know, it's like losing their jobs. We have mm -hmm. said it before, yeah. and I can repeat it here. Yeah. Restructuring is not meant to have anybody lose their jobs. Yeah. Look, the financial situation of the institution is that we have a choice yeah. to retrench, reduce salaries, or send people out. Yeah, and we chose to restructure mm. to make the institution sustainable, effective in its processes, and efficient in its service delivery. Yeah, without yeah. people losing their jobs, it's just the structures that are changing mm. to allow that to happen. I think mm. it's a better v choice, in my view, than restructuring and sending people home. Yeah, yeah. So, no. mm. if there would be anybody who who lose their jobs, it has nothing to do with restructuring. Yeah. And also with restructuring obviously the issue of our stake uh, uh, stakeholder partnerships, I uh, you know, are, are they involved in this process? Our stakeholder partnership in w w it depends which yeah. stakeholders. If we mean if we mean uh, like the industries, you know, look, uh, sometimes UNAM is accused of not, you know, producing employable graduates. And perhaps now this process can somehow help us bridge mm. that way what, what UNAM is training, you know, it's also in line with the industries uh, yeah. requesting or asking for, or at least that, that can meet them. So uh, are they... They are in the are involved in the curriculum transformation yeah. and they will be engaged in in-depth mm. uh, for the whole of this year because by November the new curriculums, new syllabuses should be read. That's where the industry would play a mm. part, in-depth. Yeah. But in terms of the general issues around governance, what structures you need, what sort of human resources you need, how do you structure a certain faculty? Those were already done in 2018, 2019. Mm. It's the process of benchmarking uh, with different universities. That's yeah, what uh, that's, that's, has yeah, happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so that was done. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think uh, just to bring you back again on the mechanisms uh, management is putting in place to ensure that students are enterprising and innovative. Uh, again, there mm -hmm. I'm emphasizing mm -hmm. work readiness program, yeah. the Chancellor's Innovation Fund. Mm. Uh, there is also the UNAM case initiative where we, yeah. we, we expect our students mm. to really be, be alert yeah. in looking at the challenges that are out there in the society, in the, in the industry, and come mm. up with proposals yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. to yeah. really address these problems. We, we, yeah. we cannot afford as a nation, I think, mm. and as a university yeah. to watch and sit and just complain. Yeah, pro, pro, talk a, b a bit about UNAM Cares, because I mean, we see we see a few adverts on social media, UNAM Cares, maybe just for those that want to get to know more about, uh, or even those who want maybe to donate to UNAM okay. Care. Maybe you can just talk a bit about that. We are a public uh, university or public funded university. Mm. Uh, so how do we give back to society? 
as vice chancellor in 2019 i thought best way to do this is to create a, a corporate social social responsibility entity mm. which we called unam case mm. its uh, mandate is to respond to the challenges that are out there so i, I think i believe it has six or seven thematic areas mm. in which we use universities uh, staff members and students time and their competencies and capacity mm. to mobilize resources mm. to be able to respond to those challenges mm. for example we have uh, old age homes or orphan homes that we uh, uh, we respond to we we go there we make assessments mm. and we raise resources with other partners mm. uh, to respond to those needs Mm. Uh, currently, we are busy with uh, a, 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 a project with the uh, International Migration Organization for vulnerable and stranded migrants. Mm. Mm. There are people who come here, maybe they come for studies or for some other reason, then they are caught. Mm. Or, or they were brought in here with dubious means and they can't return. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and through that project as a university, we assist. Uh, the relevant entities with home mm. affairs mm. and uh, yeah. UN mm. by assessing uh, yeah. and screening these people and making sure that they mm. are repatriated mm. with dignity. Yeah, yeah. But it's the same for it's schools. We want mm. our schools to, to deliver better yeah. uh, uh, education. Yeah, no, that's and so true. We, we go in there and assess. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and Espe especially it. now with COVID yeah. and yeah. all that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, and speaking of COVID, uh, Prof, how is the university coping with the pandemic? Uh, at the moment well i think at this stage as of last week we had uh, about 182 cases or so mm. uh, and unfortunately during this time we have lost two staff members mm. and i once again wish to extend my sympathy to to the families of those uh, staff mm. members mm. Uh, it has been tough but we have come out as a resilient institution Mm. We need to continue to, to stick to the protocols, take care of one another, mm. uh, support one another. Mm. Where there are gaps, let's support each other. Mm. Uh, and we have come up with the protocols that are required. Mm. We have a crisis uh, committee, uh, which is chaired by my colleague, by Prof. Gideon. Mm. Uh, they meet weekly uh, uh, and we, we try and, and ensure. Yeah. But indeed, uh, for various reasons, it has impacted the university. Mm. And I'm just very proud of all staff members and students for where we have been able to get because of the effort that you have taken. Uh, I take my hat off. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, I mean, we have to learn to yeah. sort of like navigate. We have to yeah. adapt to new changes, Absolutely. different ways of teaching. Absolutely. <laughs> with all and the I different mean, challenges. Uh, 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 with, with the work we have done last year, some students are mm -hmm. asking whether they can shift just to be registered online in for mm. the future. So they see that as another way of, of education. Mm. Uh, and we need to pay attention. There are many universities in the world that are fully online, that have mm. always been online, like Indira Gandhi National University. Uh, mm. More than one million students, mm. and all of them all over the world are online. Mm. Mm. But did you have some kind of maybe just informal conversations with staff of how they are coping with teaching online? Um, I mean, maybe. Yes, I do. I think <laughs> like I said, I, mean, <laughs> I go to offices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I think you just. I mean, I, I had to learn. I was one of those raggeds that, you know, sort of like don't always appropriate technology yeah. immediately, and I was forced <laughs> to learn even how to use yeah. some from, of these things. From my discipline, I know that when uh, new circumstances come or new innovation, mm. you will find four types of people. Mm -hmm. Active delayers mm -hmm. and passive delayers. <laughs> Active adopters <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, passive okay. adopters. Where do you put some of us? <laughs> so when I visit my colleagues, we have a chat. I get a sense of, mm. in the beginning, it was frustrating. Yeah. Uh, but with time, uh, they, they are excited about it. I, I, mm. uh, the sense I'm getting, it's very time demanding. Mm. And I think this might be also for the students. Also, yeah. it's very yeah. demanding. Mm. But it places responsibility on all of us to just change our mindset and uh, and see things differently. Yeah, uh, yeah, but but still, this digital divide is still somehow affecting the teaching and learning, obviously. So yes, and my challenge to staff is, yeah. what are you going to do about it? Nobody's going to solve it for us. We have to engage <laughs> and solve it. 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, we need to engage more, actually, to see how we can solve it. I mean, that's the only way the university can, can move forward. Um, I mean, if we don't do this, I mean, what will happen? But anyway, Prof, to, to bring you back to, uh, you know, this, uh, the, how the university is coping, uh, obviously the enrollment has been um, probably also um, impacted during this COVID maybe, or has it not? I'm thinking even uh, in terms of our international students, of course, even, in, even international mobility with all these COVID, where are we as a university? I, I am certain there has been an impact because people lost their jobs and therefore they have not been able to support their children or families adequately as they would. Mm. Uh, but uh, uh, we are sensitive to this mm. and for that reason you may recall that uh, we postponed uh, deadlines for registration, I think, twice mm, to accommodate mm. uh, families to be able to do so. Yeah, uh, it's because we are paying attention uh, mm. uh, uh, to that. Uh, secondly, uh, we started a, a bi annual registration uh, system. system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we will have another registration uh, in the second by semester, July, August, second semester. Yeah. Uh, but overall, the impression now I get uh, from the figures I've seen is that mm. we are more or less what we mm. were uh, what? last Any year. Any idea what those uh, figures around are? 30, around 30. Around 30,000. Uh, oh, I think uh, we... Just just under. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but so in the good, second yeah. semester, I believe yeah. that that would be yeah. beyond that. Yeah. yeah, probably the same qualifications, <laughs> that programs, you know. We have this thing of students, you know, and I see it even, you know. Uh, students that are mostly like, I want to do nursing, I want to do education. You know, this, this yeah. traditional qualification. <laughs> you see, why do you think that's the case? <laughs> well, before I address that, let me just say, mm. uh, I think the biggest impact uh, of COVID uh, has been on the graduation rates, especially regarding ah, postgraduate yes. uh, qualifications. Uh. People who needed to go to, to field work to do yeah, research uh, yeah, yeah. has become complicated. Yeah. So that, uh, that was affected. Yeah. Uh, and we Major, yeah. But is there some yeah. kind of support from the university side, especially for the postgraduates, when it comes to, you know, I mean, knowing that, you know, the, the field works. I mean, some even have to change their methodology because mm. of this COVID. I mean, is there some kind of support or at least uh, uh, plans to for the for the for these students? Uh, okay, I, I will answer it in the way that we we have been looking at this unit of postgraduate. Uh, very carefully yeah also in the restructuring yeah uh, because we 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 cannot at this stage the total postgraduate student population masters and phd mm. are under 10 percent and for a big university like yeah, us that's not we have got to yeah to put it up to, somehow yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so the new structure accommodates for this adequate support that mm. uh, masters and phd uh, require mm. now to answer your question about um, the majority of our students are in <laughs> education and nursing <laughs> it's true that's where we get them uh, the majority of the applicants they want that but they want it we will provide it but, but what i would say so? is mm. the reason for this is 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 a traditional and legacy uh. Uh, you must become a teacher, in you the must past, become a days. <laughs> in the past, before independence, people were told, be a pastor, be a teacher, mm. be a nurse. More mm. or less, these were the professions that we were, if we take into account role models, yeah. that's yeah. all we knew. Yeah. But uh, the good news is that as a university, we are offering dentistry, we are offering mm. veterinary medicine, yeah. we are offering medicine, yeah. pharmacy, mm. you can become a biochemist, yeah. uh, different kind of science-based uh, professions, yeah. uh, you can do aeronautics. Yeah, yeah uh, probably we need to maybe just... Very many yeah. different kinds of opportunities that are there now. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying stop applying to education. Yeah. No, 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 that's not the point. Do <laughs> that, but just know that there yeah. are many other yeah. professions yeah. Yeah. that you can yeah. pursue. Yeah. Yeah, may, maybe we also need to sort of like strengthen our career guidance, especially at schools for even the learners uh, to know that there's more than education and nursing, that yeah. there are also other professions. Uh, I'm sure. But also... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure our communication <laughs> colleagues uh, are working very hard on that. Uh, to in the past, we used mm. to go to schools mm. 
to do this career guidance. Yeah, business. yeah, but, uh, yeah. We don't have resources for that now. Yeah. Uh, and so, but but the len the new platforms, uh, smartphones and others, we can use those to reach out to yeah. different pro professions. Yeah, yeah. Um, pro uh, prof, I know that uh, our time is also quite limited, but you know, one more question. Um, you, you were a student yourself at one, one point, mm -hmm. yeah? All of us, I think when you were in grade 12, grade 10, you look forward to university life. Uh, you know, especially stepping foot on campus, mm -hmm. uh, whichever campuses, wherever. Yeah. And, and particularly for young people, for some of them, they want to mm -hmm. kind of like escape the parents, <laughs> you know, grips. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hits. Mm. And now most of our students, especially our first year students, they are at home, you know, so we see what can, you know, I mean, they all want to experience university life, but obviously uh, because of COVID, they are not able to. Now, as a vice chancellor and also thinking when you were a young person, <laughs> what can you say to these young people who somehow are still looking forward to experience the real university life, and not just in terms of academic, but also social life. Mm -hmm. what, what can you say to these young men and women? <laughs> it's tough, and I sympathize <laughs> with them. Uh, I remember when we came, most of us were 18, 19 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a matter that we have discussed uh, uh, with my colleagues in the, in the uh, ACU in the Association for Commonwealth Universities. Yeah. Especially uh, if you are an international student and now you go back or you are coming from rural area, now you go back there, you don't really have this university life anymore. So what do I say? I, I say there are many platforms now that mm. you can use online to still socialize, to mm. remain active. Mm. The key thing is remain active, yeah. especially in terms w of sports. Wherever you are. Yeah, remain active. Do mm. extra mural. Yeah. Whatever you may be, yeah. remain active, and this is gonna pass. Yeah. You know, the, the the vaccine. I know the controversies and other things yeah. are there, but the, the the thing is, once the vaccine is here, mm. we take it and we normalize life as soon as yeah, possible. Uh, this uh, and then you can enjoy uh, yeah. campus life. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. Uh, your final welcoming message to the University of Namibia community for 2021 academic year for us to wrap up. Hey, thank you. Let me just uh, <laughs> repeat. As a university, remember always we have a vision. Yeah. We want to be an international hub of excellency in research, teaching, uh, training and innovation by mm -hmm. 2030. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, we must be committed. And uh, uh, oh, let me use, let's take ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take ownership of education, of, of the service that we mm -hmm. provide. Yeah. Uh, and we, where service is not as it mm. should be, mm -hmm. we have channels and, mm. and processes through which those. So don't go to social media and just complain there. Take it to the, either you're the, the SRC representative or the respective office. And if they don't assist you, escalate according mm. to processes. But if you run to your the, office. Yes, it can come <laughs> to my office. Through yeah. this process, it yeah. can come to my office. Mm. And we want a university that mm. is uh, uh, robust, resilient and sustainable. Yeah. And I think we can do it together. And I want to once again thank the staff for the mm. great work that they've done last year mm. and the commitment that we received from our students to learn. Mm. Let's continue to do so and make the, un the UNAM we want. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Oh, thank you, VC. Um, thank you, UNAM community. You've heard from our VC. A very brilliant welcoming for 2021 academic year. And again, like VC said, we must continue to be engaged. We have to continue to con with resilience. And we hope to see you on our respective campuses very soon. So thank you so much for listening listening to this and th once again welcome and I want to thank uh, my colleagues from the communications and marketing department. Thank you for your job well done and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.